On this episode, Christian reveals why he is making all of this. I want to make our lives a little bit more complicated. And of course, it all goes wrong. Like, uh oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> but in the end, it's going to be fine somehow. Mmm, yes. Mm. Hi everybody, hi everybody, this is Christian, this is LazyDiffs Academy, welcome to our advanced map tutorial episode 16. And today we have a lot of stuff to do because we are moving on to a new, maybe the final prototype before we actually start working on the game. Yes, so far all those episodes were all about just figuring out things, figuring out um, you know, how to actually make the game, you know, what are the limitations of, of, of making the game. Let me show you something. Yeah, so as, I, as we said last time around, we, uh, just, we are just done with the explosion prototype and this is now uh, the final prototype we are approaching, which kind of like, kind of like smoothly transitions into actually working on the game because we have to build a level. The task is to make a level. And with level, I don't mean like enemies and stuff like that. That's, that's the whole, that's actually the level, that's the gameplay, right? Uh, but with level, I mean actually the uh, background, uh, the scrolling background. That's something that we have to do. Um, and uh, in order to do that, we also have to make the tile set. And those two things are kind of like interlinked. Interlinked. Uh, you kind of cannot make a tile set without thinking about the level that you're going to make. And you cannot make a level without having a tile set. So you kind of like it's kind of like a chicken and egg situation. We kind of have to build, develop those together. And um, there's also Secret Tech 1, and there's also Secret Tech 2. And today the task is going to be those two Secret Techs. Um, let's, so let's put the Secret secret Techs on top. But also something I want to do, uh, um, add the plane. Uh, we're going to see why, maybe like later on, but I think it's a good idea to merge to merge the weapons of movement prototype, especially the movement prototype. Maybe the weapons, I'm not sure, sure about that, but the movement prototype uh, with the scrolling prototype. And so that's gonna be the first task when we're gonna see if we can make secret tech one and secret tech two today. Right, so let us go into load a scroll. And I'm gonna go save a scroll too. And then, uh, yeah, this is this is all good stuff. 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 Um, and we're gonna keep this goal around. So it's kind of like a reminder. Um, and then let's let's bring in the tasks. Add the plane. Secret tech one. Secret tech two. Um, right. So let us first concentrate on bringing over the code from the movement prototype from the movement weapon prototype into here. And this is the kind of setup where you kind of have to have open two windows at the same time. I'm sorry, they're not both visible on the screen. Um, so let us go load move, right? And let us start bringing stuff over. I'm gonna actually, yeah, let's let's just like, uh, we're gonna have butt R, ship R, ship spur, shot, shot weight. There is, there is quite a lot of stuff that we need to bring over, but it is necessary, it is necessary. And then um, we definitely want to have this stuff here in, in it. Um, and then a, a, I, I don't need the CLS, but we do definitely need a T equals zero. Do we, don't we have a T? No, we don't have a T yet, okay. Then in the draw, we already have a CLS. We actually probably don't need the CLS. We do need the CLS because sometimes the um, we want to see the background of, of the maps. If, the, if, 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 if we're drawing the maps wrongly, we want to see a background there. If we don't do a CLS, we don't see the background. Um, so let us do, this is shots. Yes, yes, all of this, all of this. And then this, this is just debugging stuff. We don't need that stuff. And we're gonna put it in here, blop. Drawing all the shots, drawing the muzzle flash, drawing the ship. And then all that is left is just doing the, uh, the update function. So, so this is gonna be um, this, all this stuff. Plop. And then we have these functions about doing the shots and doing the muzzle flash and the my sign. We're gonna put this into its own tab 
I'm gonna call this tab um, move and shoot. Do we have something here? Oh yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, let's let's put let's take all these out as well. It's just a little bit too much code, but it's okay. There's one more thing that we need to add, and that is, and that's gonna be a problem, guys. <laughs> no, we need to bring over the sprites. <laughs> and no, oh no, how is Padme? Is she all right? <laughs> No, we put our sprites in the same place. Oh no. So we kind of have to choose between having to redo all the map stuff again or having to redo all the code, like like re find again what the different <laughs> different animations are now in the new positions. Oh, oh, let's, let's just like change the code. I feel like, like we're gonna redo the, uh, definitely redo the map, uh, but I don't want to redo it multiple times. <laughs> so let's just copy this one stuff out here and I'm going to paste it in here. And now all that is left to do is kind of like go through the code a little bit and, and make sure that, um, for example, animations are okay. So this is 11, right? But in our version, this is uh, 75. Oh man, this is going to be, this is going to be lovely. I'm going to speed this part up. Okay, I think I got it. I think we had to ch change the ship array and otherwise we had to ch change all of the uh, Sanyi stuff in here in the muzzle flash and in the in the uh, b bullet animations. There's also one more thing uh, that I think we need to tweak the flame array that's here. There we go. All right, let's try that. Save, run. Ooh, it works, it works, it works from the bat. Oh, I am so happy. Oh, and look, this this already feels like a game, man. We have a ship, we're flying above a scrolling landscape. This already brings me shmup vibes and we're shooting and everything. Oh, we don't have a sound, we don't have a sound. Let's bring the sound in. Okay, you can only copy out sounds in, in this. <laughs> In this window you cannot when you copy here it doesn't copy because I think it always wants to copy this this little note so you have to copy here okay does that work now oh yeah look at this mm, yes that feels nice good okay 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 this is good this is good this is something I like now let us move on to the things that we are supposed to do in this so this is done we added the plan I, did I say plans <laughs> let's add the plans uh, done um, next, I'm gonna do the secret tech reveal. The secret tech that we're gonna do today, well, actually I already did it reveal because it was part of the uh, doggy zone last time around. I want to make our lives a little bit more complicated. I want to do sideways scroll. Here's the thinking. Um, there is a lot of schmups. Um, Raiden is a very good example because it, Raiden is like really going far. Now, in a lot of shmups, when you move your ship sideways, like in the vertical shmup, uh, it's scrolling constantly, right? Scrolling down. But when you move your ship sideways, um, the background kind of like moves a little bit with the ship or, or against the ship, I guess, right? So it's like, um, it's kind of like like Super Mario, I guess, when you run around in Super Mario and you reach the edge of the screen, the screen kind of scrolls, you never quite reach the, um, the end of the screen. It's kind of a little bit like this. You have a little bit of a wiggle room sideways. Um, and there's like, I think, two reasons why you, like, it's kind of like weird that they do this. I think there's like two reasons for why you would do this. First is the... <laughs> First is that um, you see more of the landscape. It allows you to see more of the landscape. It gives you kind of like a wider play area, so to speak. Um, because, you know, it's a quite narrow screen and it kind of like makes the screen a little bit wider. Um, I think that's kind of like something that, that might be a reason why you would add something like this. Not necessarily something that we needed here, but, you know, it's just something like a little detail. I think something that's more important, that's why I want to have it here. I think it, the screen looks a little bit more lively, more dynamic, more plastic, you know, plastic, more three-dimensional, right? Because there's more movement generally on the screen. There's more responsiveness to like when you do things, when you move your ship around, more things happen. And um, 
I think we want that. I want that. Or at least, because this is a prototype, I want to try it out. Here is the problem. You know how in the how we made those columns, right? We made those segments. And the segments are exactly, they're exactly the width of a screen, right? But if we want the screen to move sideways a little bit, so we want more, we have to have more real estate on those segments. We, the segments have to be a bit wider now, so they can also scroll sideways. That means that if the segments are wider, we're going to have less columns. We are going to, we are going to lose these segments here these segments have to go because the other segments will get a little bit wider. Dang, that's not cool. That's not cool. We're going to have less segments to work with and we already have very limited segments. So this is kind of an expensive, a costly decision that we're doing here. Having this dynamic, like this immediate effect of seeing move, things moving around the screen might be worth it. Let's try it out. Okay, so let us create a variable called x scroll. Yeah, let's go x, x scroll. And let's just draw this variable on this. We have to debug this variable. We're gonna have to, there's gonna be some math involved. We're gonna go print x scroll um, 517 and we're gonna put it there. Okay, so let's just run this now. Okay, the third number on the top there, that's x scroll. Now, obviously, it's not changing now because we just defined it. It's, it's fine. First, I want to make sure that this variable is doing good things. That is good. That is, the numbers are right about that variable. I want that variable to change when we move our, our ship. Um, so this is here an update function. And this is w one of the reasons why I want to add the ship to the, to the prototype here, because like this is not something you could implement without the ship being in this. Um, so let me see. So here is kind of like, yeah, yeah. this is after removed. So here we, we can do calculations about from the x scroll. So x scroll, let's just say px divided by 128. Let's just like try with that for now. Let's just see what happens. So now it's, we have a variable that is kind of like, okay, we can go off screen, which is kind of bad. But if we're at the left edge of the screen, we are, um, we are at zero or close to zero. And when we go to the right edge of the screen, well, this is the right edge of the screen and we are not at zero now. See, we are at 0 0.8. Um, this is because this, the, um, the ship has a certain width and we're gonna get to one when we go, go almost off, off screen. So we cannot divide by 128. We have to divide by a, a smaller number, uh, minus 16, because the ship, width of the ship is 16. Right, so let's uh, go 112, right? Okay, so now again, uh, our left edge of the screen, we're at zero, right edge of the screen, we are at one. That's what I generally what I'm looking for here. I want to have a variable that is kind of indicates my, my horizontal position first. We're gonna tweak it in a second. Okay, so good, so good. Now, I don't like the fact that uh, we can have numbers that are smaller than zero and bigger than one. So let us do a mid on this one. Let's just do a mid. I feel mid about this, zero comma and one. We're kind of clamping it down so it's never smaller than zero and never bigger than one. Okay, that's good, that's good, that seems good. Okay, but here's the thing, I am, um, we have to now decide how much we wanna scroll sideways, that's something that we have to do. Um, we are gonna lose we are going to lose a whole column anyway. So we can go all the way out and be like, okay, let's just add eight pixels on the left side and eight pixels on the right side. So instead of being 16 tiles wide, this is 16 tiles that we see right now, we're gonna make the segments 18 tiles wide. So um, one tile on the left and one tile on the right is what I'm thinking. So um, let us just, Let's just see if this works. Um, we're going to multiply this by um, 16, 16 pixels, right? And then we are going to, when we're drawing the background, when we're drawing the background, where is it? Where is it? Uh, here, here's where we're drawing the background, right? Uh, here's the X position of where we're drawing the background. Let's just plop in X scroll. 
Ooh, that's exactly the opposite of what we're trying to do. <laughs> I'm gonna multiply by minus 16 there. Ooh, and that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. See, this is good. This is good. There's one problem I have, like you have to go really close to the edge, close to the edge when you um, when you want to like, like it would be nice if there was a bit of a dead zone on the edges, a bit of a dead zone on the edges, right? So let us do something like um, px minus three. Let's see that. Ah, I think we added a dead zone on the right edge now. So see, so I don't have to go all the way to the edge for the scrolling to stop. And then we can also, by dividing by a smaller number, we can add the dead zone on the right side. Is that how it works? Hmm. No, that doesn't quite work. Let's, let's do a real big dead zone. Yeah, okay, now, now we have a really big dead zone on the left side. And then, um, wait a minute. What, what was the number previously? Okay, so now we have a dead zone here. So like moving around here won't move the screen, um, but we don't have a dead zone here. Oh yeah, but this dead zone is really big now. It's 10 pixels, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, it's, I guess it's just like finding out the numbers. It, it kind of bothers me when it's not mathematically correct. Like it's if, if it's like I'm just like looking for numbers. Why is it not? Am I am I am I in the wrong here? Am I in the wrong here? Am I doing completely something completely wrong? Let's let's do something. Re see something really wrong. Okay, this is really wrong. Sixty is obviously really wrong, but it's not too far away. Yeah, yeah, maybe 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 hundred. Yeah, that seems good. That seems about what I was looking for. Okay, so now, but we see like, it's kind of like off to the side now. Well, because our segments are too narrow, we have to make our segments wider now. And again, this is the moment where I will accelerate because I have to redo the maps once more. Now, when I redo the maps, I want to do uh, another thing that I, 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 was, I was thinking about, which is, you know how we're starting with one here? You know how the, the first segment is the segment number one? When we are calculating the, the column and the row of the segments, you know, the X and Y coordinates where the segments are in the map, when you're filling the segment library with our segments, we always have to do I minus one, right? Like it's always like I minus one and we can get around with this. We can just get rid of the I minus one by making our segments go to from zero to 31. And then we can just leave out the minus one and that saves us a bunch of tokens. We just get tokens for free. And I love tokens for free. So, um, so yeah, I want the segments to start with zero, not with one. And, and the, the numbering of the segment will start with zero and that will make the underlying math a little bit easier. All right, so this is gonna be now me fixing the, uh, the segments one last time. All right, so we are now done. <clears throat> we have now decreased the number of available segments down to 28 uh, from zero to 27. So um, uh, yeah, we have four less segments, but uh, I think it will be fine. It's gonna be fine. Uh, just making sure here that we don't have segments that go off screen. Um, yeah. Oh, we're, yeah, we have, we used the 32 quite a lot. Quite a lot. Why do I did I make such a big map? I guess to test the performance, right? Okay. Um, I want actually the first one to start at zero, so we can see the zero to work. Okay. We change the code here. It's no longer i minus one, but it's, it's this. Um, one more thing is now no longer sixteen pixels wide, uh, sixteen tiles wide. Now it's eighteen tiles wide, and we want to make sure that when we calculate the position of the segments, we are using eighteen now. Uh, something somebody said in the comment section, and, and thank you for that, is that we have a floor here, a floor and a division. And something that you can do to simplify things, it saves a bunch of tokens, a little bit of tokens, um, right? This is, this is this entire line is now 10 tokens, 9 tokens. 
and then if you you can remove the floor and instead of the division instead of the division you can do a backslash division the backslash division i think we already talked about it is um divide and floor so that's kind of nice and so that those those um we kind of say to save two tokens i think here and also it looks more compact i kind of like this i kind of like this i kind of overlook this little detail cool 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 uh, now, one more thing, when we're drawing the map, we also have to draw wider segments. So it's now, it's no longer 16, but now 18. And let's run this, let's save. Oh no, my sec is nil value. What? Yeah, because, don't worry, we're gonna fix this in a second, but um, we're adding stuff to our segment library and we start with zero. And when we use the add statement, it adds, um, you know, starting with one because the um, uh, arrays in Lua start with one. Um, whatever, just remove the zero, just start with one. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. You will see in a second. All right, so it's, this is good. We now have, we now, like when we're in the center, when we're in the center, and we are kind of like in the center now, we don't see the yellow edges, and we only see the yellow edges when we go to the edges. This looks nice, this looks dynamic. We have a nice, really wide playing field. This is cool. Now, I have to say, like, if you really wanted to have those, those four segments that we lost, there's ways around this. We could get a wider segment using different techniques. I was thinking, considering something, and you might try this out maybe in a doggy zone, uh, to just duplicate the edge tiles. So if you go, um, just like repeat the edge tiles on the edges with using some code, that would be totally viable. Um, but yeah, I chose like something like this because I think this, this is generally like less use less code and maybe I don't need the four segments. Okay, so this is working. We have sideways scrolling done now and it looks nice. I like it. Let's keep, let's keep it around. Let's see if we can um, make the level with those four less segments. Now it is, we're going to reveal secret tech number two. What is secret tech number two? Well, I want to rewrite the way our segment system works a little bit. And that's why I swept, you know, the zero problem just there under the carpet, because we're going to rewrite that stuff anyway. There is some functionality of this, of this, um, of the scrolling system that we have here that I want to add. And that thing that I want to add is I want to add the ability to repeat segments. Here's the thing, we're going to have some landscape, we're going to scroll through some landscape and eventually we're going to have a boss fight on that landscape, um, like a mid-boss fight. Like a mid -boss, You fight a boss but there's still more level coming up um, on the top. And when I fight a mid-boss, I want the landscape to not scroll, to continue scrolling, I want it to start repeating. So, for example, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna fight the boss, and the boss is going to be above water, let's say, and then I don't want, you know, to the, the land to come up again, and some more landscapes coming up again that I painfully designed because it's a boss fight anyway. I want in this situation to just the, land, the water to just repeat constantly until that boss is defeated, and then we're gonna get some new landscape. Okay, uh, boss landscape repetition. And that, that throws quite a wrench in our system because this is, this is, this is going to be tough. This is going to be difficult. Uh, let me first set up the, uh, set up the stage. So uh, we are going to create a new variable called boss and it's going to be false, uh, false. And then we are going to draw it to the screen. So there's going to be a thing and then we're going to draw it and then it's going to be 23. And then we're going to draw boss. Uh, actually, we're going to draw a boss and I'm going to use a ternary here and boss or no boss. And then we're just going to activate the boss function with the, using a button. Just when I press the button O, uh, shift O, then, or actually we can use even, even we're going to say boss equals button O. That's going to be our solution. So basically, here we go. We run this. There's no boss. Now there's a boss. And if I, the boss is on, if the boss is happening, then I want the next segment to be a one instead of the zero. I want the one to continue 
appearing until I let go of the boss button and then I should see the zero and so forth. And then we're gonna get the, the sequence that we are used to. And that requires a kind of a, like a slightly different approach. Right now we have like this map sex array and that's good. We wanna keep this around. We wanna have like a map that we're working with. But instead of just drawing straight from the map sex array, we just like grabbing things straight from the map set, um, array. Um, I want to create um, like a secondary array that shows me the segments that are supposed to be on the screen. And I'm just gonna um, get more segments from the, uh, con con continuously get more segments from the map array and that will be the usual scroll. But if uh, the boss is on, then I'm gonna, instead of getting a new segment from the, uh, from the map array, I'm gonna repeat a segment. So kind of like we keep adding, as the, the thing is scrolling, we keep adding new segments to our like a current segment array. Sounds a bit complicated. In this process, I also thinking that we can get rid of the seg segment library. I think this is kind of like very compact code and I think we can do it on the fly. We actually don't need the segment library anymore. So that's why I was like not worried about <laughs> problems happening here. Okay, so here is my thinking. We're gonna have a, an array called cur segs and we're gonna draw from this array. This is gonna be the array that will actually uh, that will actually contain the segments that we're supposed to draw on the screen. Now let us quote this out because this is no longer how we do things. Instead, what we're doing here, and in effect, we're no longer doing this, we're gonna do for um, seg in all cur segs do, right? We're just looping through the, uh, the cur seg array and we're gonna draw the cur segs on the screen. <clears throat> and then we're gonna copy this code that we already kind of already had. Well, I'm, not, not, I'm gonna I'm leaving this code around because it always feels a bit. I always feel a bit nervous just deleting code that was working previously. Like no, this was good code. <laughs> this was my code. So just leave it around. Um, so we're gonna go a seg. Um, we're gonna y m just let's keep keep it around. Oh, do, 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 do. Seg y. Um, then this is going to be the position where we're drawing this. Oh no, the horizontal position. Horizontal position is fine. Um, a vertical position is problematic. No, it's not going to be seg x for sure. Why is it seg x? This is wrong. Uh, this should be scroll, right? And then 18 and oh, eight, that, that's good, that's good. Okay, so if you run this, nothing will happen because we have nothing in the segments array. We have nothing in this curve seg array. So now we kind of have to add some code that detects whether we are supposed to, like if the we're running out of segments and puts more segments in the curve seg array. Let's put it in here when we're scrolling and this is gonna be scrolling, scrolling. And this is gonna be movement, movement. Let's just go something like if cursex, uh, if hashed, this is going to be more complicated, sophisticated uh, later, but if cursex is a number of cursex is smaller than one, then, and then the, here's where we're going to add a new segment to the cursex array. So add cursex, comma, square brackets, uh, curly brackets, comma, and then we're going to have an x value, we're going to have a y value. And then we are going to, yeah, that's gonna be it for now. For now, just like add, add something. I, I just wanna add, add something to see if this even works. And then we're gonna think about, you know, how, how we're gonna fill it with smarter values. Okay, see, it's fine. It's fine. It's working. It's okay. You don't, we don't have to be so nervous. It's, it's, it's just working. It's just working. Okay, we have, we have a segment. We're adding a segment. That's good. Now, the problem, of course, happens now is what if we add a second segment, right? If we add, let's, let's add a second segment and let's be like really smart about it. The next one is going to be a different segment. Let's run this. And now the two segments are on top of each other. <laughs> So um, the segments are not supposed to just have X and Y. I think it's worthwhile to just add another, um, another uh, number to those segments and that is gonna be the offset. I'm gonna call it O. And basically the first one is gonna be zero, but the next one is gonna be, uh, the second one is gonna be Jeebus. 64, 
is what I'm thinking. So it's kind of like further down, right? And then when we're drawing your segments, we need to add those to, to this, right? Plus my seg dot O. Oh, not, not my seg, seg, just seg O, there, there we go. Okay, so this works, this works. But it's actually, you see how we added, like it's, it's other way around. We should, the next segment, the next segment should be above and no, not below. <laughs> <laughs> by pointing at the screen, you don't see. Uh, we added two segments, but they're like being added on the bottom. But we actually want to add new segments on the top. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we were trying to do. Um, let's keep this just around. How about we keep this around and we just flip it around here when we're drawing it. Uh, so we're gonna do, go minus seg O and that will, that will fix the problem. Okay, okay. So this is now how we can add new segments. Okay, but now what you see is that when, we, when we're flying around, um, eventually we run out of segments and then there's no segments being added. So now we this code where we add a new segment, this needs to be a bit smarter. It needs to detect when we are about to run out of segments and then get a new segment in. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep this around, um, but we're gonna add a second question and that is kind of like when, um, when, when does the um, last segment from our array, when does that last segment, um, when is it drawn uh, somewhere down the screen? If the last segment on our current segment and array is being drawn at a positive Y value, that means there is going to be a gap on top. We're going to see that dark red uh, shining through, right? And that is the point where we need to add a new segment. So uh, you just saw what how, when you know the code that we use when we draw things, right? We just saw the code. That's uh, that's the code here. So basically, with, when this is positive, that's where where we need to add a new segment. So we're gonna go if this is greater than zero, then we're gonna add a new segments. Okay. And we just let me just add in one single segment. It's fine. Uh, no, let's just not add it a single. It's, it's fine. Let's just keep it around. The only problem is like, uh, what segments are we talking about? Where well, we're going to talk about the last segment in the array. So that's going to be a cur segs square brackets hashtag cur segs. So hashtag cur segs is the number of cur segs that we have in this array. And cur segs is yeah, we're just going to grab basically the last entry from the array. And we're going to check it offset. Uh, we're going to subtract that from um, from scroll. And if the result is greater than zero, then that means we are about to have a gap on the top of the screen, and we need to add more segments to our cursor array. So let's run this. Ooh, it's not working. It's also getting like really bogged down. Like, oh, oh, oh no. There is a problem. We keep adding new segments every frame, but they're being added on the, with the same offsets. So we are not actually increasing our, improving our situation. Um, so let me just add a single um, segment here and we have to figure out uh, the new offset. We can do something like hashtag cur segs um, multiplied by 64. Um, this is gonna be wrong, but let's just keep it around for now. All right, alas, it is working. It is working. We are, now we're always getting the zero. We're always getting the zero, and that's kind of like what we want to happen when the boss is on, like when, when we press the boss button, that's what we want to have. We want to, uh, the same segments be added to our segment array. Um, however, we want to also scroll through our map. Um, and we're gonna add a new variable here, map seg, map seg i, and we're gonna start at one, map, map seg i. Um, and so the idea is that usually we're gonna get, um, uh, oh wait, 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 wait. I want to copy this, I want to copy this code. This is gonna be good code. We're gonna, we're gonna reuse that code. Uh, when we're adding a new segment to our current segments array, I want to grab, I want to grab the number of the segment that we're supposed to draw from our um, from our map array. So we're gonna do something like um, local seg segnum equals map 
segs square brackets map segi and then we're gonna go map segi plus equals one uh, let's do that before and we're gonna see why in a second and then let's start the map segi array at zero ah there we go zero okay so we're starting at zero so uh, it gets advanced immediately okay 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 uh, and now I want to reuse this code, so I want to just take this, and we know this is going to be the column, so that's going to be uh, the X position. And I'm just going to paste it right in here, right into our, our, our code directly. We don't need those helper variables anymore because we are using, we are being smart again. Uh, and now we just need to replace the, the I with a signum. That's, a, that's the number that we got from our map sex array, and that's it. That is the code to add new segments to, to the array. So we see now one, two, Uh, one, one, two, one, eight, one, two, one, eight, and so forth. It's working. So now we're looping through the map sex array. So in other words, nothing changed. No, <laughs> we kind of like replicated the behavior from before. Wow. Amazing. It's, it's incredible. It's I'm, I'm blown away. By the way, something I don't, don't like is that how we start, uh, we, we start kind of like in a bad spot. Uh, where's scroll? What, what's, what, what value does scroll start at zero? Um, can we make it so that when we're adding segments, we're adding them uh, further down? Can we make it so? Yeah, that's, that's also good. Now, so now we're starting. Uh, already with a filled screen, that's something I wanted to do, to do have. Okay, so this is good, but now I want to the, the boss button to work. The boss button, so there's something, something we want to do. So basically, we're going to say if boss, then, and then something else when it's not the boss. Something like this. I'm gonna say nothing because we're gonna use it in a second here, but something like this, we're just not advancing the, the eye. So we're just not skipping to the next element from our map array. We're just gonna stay on the same uh, element from our map array. So we're just gonna repeat that segment that we added previously. Okay, so let's see. Um, there's one, I'm gonna wait for the 27 because I know there's gonna be 27, there's eight. There's 27. I'm going to press the boss key. And the 27 repeats. The 27 repeats. Isn't that great? So now we can repeat a segment when there's a boss happening. And then when the boss is finished, we, there's no boss anymore, we can continue our map. So we can kind of like pause the map. We're not really pausing the map. We're kind of like putting the map on loop for, for uh, a while to kind of like do a boss fight and then we can continue scrolling the map. Isn't that neat? Isn't that nice? Isn't that worth spending some time? Okay, there's one last thing though. And that's something that is kind of like very important to me. I don't like how now when we pause the map, the scroll value will continue happening. Um, so it continues count, counting up as, as the map is in, in boss mode. I don't like that. That kind of like messes up some things that I want to do maybe in the future. Because something I want to do in the future is that scroll value, that very important scroll value, that will be also a timer for enemy spawns. I want to be saying like when the scroll value reaches this, that means that we are there in the map and I want to spawn an enemy now, for example, right? I don't like how now, you know, when you put the map on, on, uh, on boss mode, the scroll value and the map will basically desync. Now the scroll value is no longer related to a certain map position that, um, that we created. I don't like that. So when I put the boss in, in I, when I put the map in scroll mode, I want the scroll to go minus equals 64. I want the scroll value to scroll down. But that also means that we have to loop through all of our maps, uh, occur segments. So for a seg in all cur segs do, we have to loop through all the cur segments and we have to move them 
<laughs> a little bit down to kind of like reset the scroll value. Uh, so we're gonna go here. Uh, no, no, here, seg um, dot o uh, plus equals 64 or minus equals 64. Minus equals 64, right? Yeah, yeah. So we kind of like moving everything 64 pixels down to kind of so the scroll value will loop, will also reset kind of like every time we repeat um, a segment. That's kind of like something. That, so now it's long enough, I think. Um, it's kind of like a little detail, but yeah, now watch the scroll value. That's kind of like the number that's sticking up, the second number on the left uh, left corner. See how it resets to 64 and oh, oh, we broke it. We broke it. We broke it good. And you know why we broke it? Yeah, so the problem is like the number of cursex is kind of like linked to the offset. But when we move the cursex further down, then we create gaps. Now there's a different relationship between the number of segments in our cursex array and the offset of each area because we moved everything down, right? So we kind of have to calculate this a little bit differently. We have to calculate a new offset differently. Uh, one easy way is just to take the, you know, the, take the upper, the, the last segment in our cursor area, just to take that that's already there and just add 64 on top. You're just like putting a new one on top. We're looking where the previous one was and we just add 64. That's really easy. The only problem is like, when it's the first segment you're adding, when the cursor area is completely empty, we don't know where to put it. So it's kind of like a little, little problem here, but um, we can use a ternary for that. So for example, we can go, there we go, cursex uh, smaller than one and minus 64 or cursex, and then we're gonna, then we're gonna less, get the last entry in our cursor area, so the topmost cursor. I'm gonna get that one. And we're gonna go take the offset and we're just gonna add 64. So we're gonna take, we're just gonna add stack one on top instead of doing like this global math counting the number of segments already there. So let's try that. And now it works. Now the one repeats. And you can see that how the scroll value res resets down to zero. You see how it goes down to zero? Resets down to zero. And now we let go. And now the scroll value is uh, able to continue. And now the scroll value is, is still related to the current segment, map segment that we are spawning. I'm sorry, this was a bit of a weird code, I know, this is a bit of a weird code, it's a weird way of doing the scrolling. The previous scrolling was way easier, but I like this, this ability to be able to pause, I think. Right, so this was, this was this tech, this was boss landscape repetition. Um, I didn't, I've done it now, because this is kind of like what a prototype is for, we can like testing out the limits of the tech, or what the tech allows us to do. Um, I think doing this later on in like a functioning game would have been a nightmare, but would, because you saw it, we broke a lot of things, right? And it's kind of nice to break things here in like such a confined prototype when there's not a lot of things depending on them, um, then to break them later on when it's like hooked into a game, right? Uh, but yeah, I think we got, we could figure it out. Now we have like this different prototype. And by the way, something that we can remove now is we can remove this whole seglip thing. We don't need seglips, seglips anymore. Uh, we just have our map array. That's just like, it's just a sequence of numbers that denotes the different segments. We have a counter that goes through the segment and we have, we have our cursex where we're getting those map segments into the cursex array and drawing them on the screen in this like very nice and compact fashion. So everything kind of like collapses down. That's kind of like nice. Uh, by the way, something that you can do and I might actually do, I, I have a little code here that I can and do here. We can also delete old segments now. And that's the thing, like creating like a huge array of segments and just dumping it on the screen and just relying on Pico 8 to just like skip the segments that, um, that are off screen. That kind of like always felt a little bit bad. So something you can do here, something like this. Um, I think we need to do scroll here. This is supposed to be scroll. So every time we add a new segment, 
We also check if the segment, uh, curse segment number one, that's kind of like the lowest segment, if that's off screen. And if that's off screen, we're just gonna delete it. A little bit of code, I'm gonna mark it as a star. We can remove it, it's not necessary. But it feels bad to have like a, you know, an array of 20 segments and draw them every frame to the screen and relying on Pico 8 to just like take that to the stomach. I don't know, it just feels bad. So kind of like nice to maybe to, to make sure that there is the curse like array is kind of like has a garbage collection. The segments that scroll down, scroll off screen are gonna get removed. Um, we can show that. I want to show that. Um, let's do instead of the time variable here, we're gonna do hashtag cur, cur six. So we see that we always have now, we actually always have three cur six. We always have three cur six on the screen. That's just how we roll. That's all I have today. Let's move on to the doggy zone. Yes, 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 the doggy zone. So <clears throat> we have set the stage. We have set the stage. We have done all of the tech. Now the goal is to build the level and to build the individual, um, the tile set, the tile map. And man, that's gonna be one heck of a challenge. This is now when your mockups, because you remember in episodes one, I said like you can make the mockups, but don't worry, it's, it's gonna be a while until you actually need the mockups. Well, now you definitely, your mockup has to be finished and you have to decide, decide it for a mockup because the goal for the next episode and subsequent episodes is gonna be figuring out the um, tile maps that you need to draw the levels. And in order to do that, you have to think about what are you want, what do you want to show in your level? I want you to think about the structure for your level. What is gonna be happening in the six minutes? I want you to sit down and think about what kind of different environments do you want to see in your game what kind of you know narrative structure should 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 you follow and let's just assume there's going to be three bosses two mid bosses and one final boss that's what we had previously so fill the space in between those bosses just show uh, think about things that you want want to be showing in your game depending on uh, what kind of story what kind of setting do you have because then afterwards we are going to uh, create a tile map to make those environments possible, right? We have to think about po possible environments first, and then we're gonna have to design a tile map to make those, to bring those ideas onto the screen. So it's gonna be a bit of a theoretical thing because the next episode is, again, it's gonna be a little bit more theoretical. We're gonna, not so much code, but we're gonna plan our tile map, plan our levels. This is gonna be a weird episode. I'm looking forward to that one. But for now, we're gonna go to this place at the end of each episode when I say thank you. I say thank you to all those beautiful people, wonderful people who are supporting this show on coffee. Thank you so much for your generous support. Thank you for making this show possible. Um, this time around, I have a little comment that I also wanted to read out from another Monty um, commenting on the cobblestoning episodes. Long time lurker here, just coming out of the hiding to say that I'm not sure if you need the plus 0.5 in your cobblestoning solution. Thinking back to your grid, once you floor the value and draw a diagonal line, that line will pass only through vertices, whole numbers, just as when you start the line in the center of the pixel. I may be wrong, but if, you, if not, you could save yourself a whopping four tokens, yay! Anyway, I'm really looking forward to this year so far and I look forward to seeing where it goes. I think he's right. And also I think I'm right as well. <laughs> I always think I'm right. Um, yeah, I think theoretically you could prob probably get rid of the 0.5s. Yes, it's true. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter if you set in the center of the pixel or in the corner of the pixel, uh, the diagonal will go will go the same because you remember we did the cobblestone solution we put the pixel in the center so that it will perfectly hit the the corners of the pixels right so you can just like start with the corner just as well um the reason why i uh, chose the 0 0.5 like uh, i just it just feels bad that sometimes you move just almost an entire pixel like when you move your the player almost an entire pixel um generally moving the player without them having control over it feels kind of bad and at the center of the pixel felt like, you know, you move the player the least. 
so that's why I chose 0 0.5. And also I saw some reports, people having alternative solutions to the cobblestone ring that didn't have the 0 0.5 and they had some, um, you know, surrounding errors. I'm not sure if this is because of 0 0.5 or because of something else that they did, but a 0 0.5 felt a bit safer to me. But feel free to experiment, um, <laughs> you know, with solutions that save you the four tokens that might be worth it. I'm not the, the kind of person who would throw away four free tokens, right? Yes. So, uh, again, if you want to support the show, if you aren't supporting the show yet, you can do so at coffee.com slash lazy devs. And um, I always say, but you know, it's a big deal. You can see new episodes earlier if you do. You get access to new episodes earlier. And they go quite a while earlier sometimes. Sometimes like eight new episodes are actually already uploaded if you join Coffee. Yes, yes, yes. So as I said, next episode is going to be big. It's going to be uh, theoretical. It's not going to be any coding. We're just going to think about the level and think about tile set, tile map. I'm looking forward to it. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.